So we just read, though, that when Paul was talking about comparing grace versus wages due, you are trying to earn a wage. You're not. No, the wages that Paul was talking to are the the law, the Mosaic law. Well, no, that's the problem. That's, that's, that's what he was everything. About. So how is that different than the works you're trying to do? Because that would involve because, obedience, Because right? my work, the works that I'm trying to do is a commission from Jesus. And how is that different than any commission from Jehovah in the Old Testament that, that is still... Because that was all referring to the law covenant, and the law covenant but Jesus aren't, nailed to the cross. Aren't, aren't you under the, but aren't you under the law covenant? Because you're not under the new covenant? I'm not under the, no, the the law covenant was abolished when Christ died. So there is no law from the Old Testament anymore. What I should have asked her at this point is, so you are outside the covenant? That would have potentially provided an opportunity to discuss what the Bible says about all those who are not in covenant with God. But I went in a bit of a different direction because I was still trying to figure out what she believes about this whole issue. And I could see the weird way that they try to separate the law into different categories in order to make it just moral law that you do to be saved versus other laws. It is so clear in these chapters of Romans that Paul is contrasting works with faith, not calling certain works faith, but not others. But as you can tell, she is so completely indoctrinated that this basic and powerful truth is completely hidden from her. No other than the moral law. Which Paul was talking about in Romans, so we know that... No, it doesn't even mention the moral law. Sure it mentions does. just the law. Okay, well, maybe you forget. That was in chapter 2. We, talk, we saw that several times, talking about um, adultery. Yeah, he's talking there, but... Right. In, that's all part of the flow of the because argument. Because he mentions adultery and things like that. He's ta- speaking, to, referring to moral code there. Right. He's but here about, he's referring to the entire law. So he's carrying on the exact because, same argument. Because the moral law is is applicable. Everybody knows moral law is applicable to, for, is, is never ever obsolete. So, so the organization separates that out so that your wages due is actually a good thing that can save you. Is that what you're saying? The wages do are, are your salvation. But then the, wage, he said, the wages, they're comparing a person working a, 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 an eight-hour shift, say, for instance. Right, exactly. Someone who earned it. Someone who's doing works to earn favor. So and if you're doing the works of the law, you're not saving yourself because the law is obsolete now. That's what he's referring so to there. The point, isn't, the point isn't pointing back to specific laws in the Old Testament. He's talking about the laws of God. No, he's and then he says, but to the one no, who does not work but believes in be him, talking about that. he's contrasting. Because he's talking about he is. an obsolete law. He's talking about works. He's talking about the works compared to the one who believes in him. That those That's the contrast there. I think that's really clear if you just read it in its own context. If you But you keep reading into it, oh, that's about an obsolete law, and then you can ignore it and then say, I am earning my well, wealth. Well, why did it... Why did, in chapter 2 did he refer to, when he mentioned the law, he was mentioning murder and adultery and whatever there. Mm-hmm. So he was definitely referring to the moral law part, the moral laws in the Mosaic Code. Right. And Here he's, he's referring to the... And he's still caught... That's the problem, though. You can't say, oh, it's only in chapter 2, so he's, he's finished he's that. He's talking part. about the whole co- law that was added to that because there, you, you, at first there was just the ten words and then there was it, it, it was extended to 600 laws that's but not what that's not what what paul's talking about at all here though he's talking about he's contrasting works for salvation with faith for salvation so that's well, the difference this, your your works have to agree with the rest of the bible and james and different different Bible scriptures will quote that works are essential for for living, and, so and, you never and know. even the works of the moral code. So you never know if you've done enough works to get salvation. You don't find out until you're recreated or saved from Armageddon. Is that right? Well, you nobody knows if they're going to make it because they may make they you are in perfect condition might might turn us to make us do willful sin, and if we do willful sin, then we're, we're not going to be... 
we're not going to have a chance. Well, and that's definitely the, the difference between our beliefs then, because, you know, my, my salvation is secure in Christ because my faith is Even in Even if him. you do willful sin? Well, we all sin every day. Willful sin? Willful sin? We all willfully no, sin. The, have the you Bible ever, tells us if we sin willfully, there's no more salvation. Have you ever willfully told a lie? Willful sin is you're deliberately doing something all the time. Okay, well then, thank you for clarifying that. Do, am I in ongoing unrepentant sin? No, I'm not, because I'm in Christ. Do I sin? Yes. But what, I'm still so we, not we don't know down the road tomorrow or the next day or whatever. We may not. So I do, though. Isn't that awesome? I get to be free in that. I don't have to worry about that. I know I'm in Christ. I love him. I love his law. I love his ways. I love his people. I care about people in the world. Well, then you read Matthew 24 and 13. Mm-hmm. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. So true. Mm-hmm. So that has to agree with what we're talking about. Absolutely, and that's that's what's so awesome. Have to endure that, to the end. That's exactly, and you know why I will. So endure? you haven't endured to the end because you're not dead yet. You know why you I don't will? know if you're saved. You know why Christians always do endure to the end is because of Christ, because of His work. When He makes someone a new creation, they are a new creation. They don't just become not a new creation one day. So that's that's a, an encouraging thing. It's not a. Well, I've heard, I've talked, and I've heard of a lot of people that have been born again who have done terrible things and are still sure. doing terrible things. I've noticed JWs like to make these kinds of generalizations and say they have talked to lots of Christians or born agains or whatever, but is that really true? Or is it that they're just grouping all the people they meet door to door into one broad brush group? Or is it just an exaggeration that they're taught to use in order to claim some kind of authority on a subject? Now, I understand that she probably has met a fair number of people who profess to be Christians because maybe they went to church a few times as a kid and that sort of thing. But it's really pretty clear that when people live a life completely contrary to what they say they believe, they don't really believe it to begin with. I've even had to explain this to my Muslim friend who has brought this issue up with me. She too has friends and family who profess to be Muslim, but who don't live any kind of Muslim lifestyle. It's pretty straightforward when you think about it, but it really comes down to whether you want to honestly and thoughtfully address the subject, which my Muslim friend does, by the way. But I don't hear JWs doing the same. I wonder if that's because if they did, they would have no choice but to start really questioning and thinking about why they submit wholeheartedly to the watchtower. Well, then they're, if, they're still do, if they're still in ongoing unrepentant sin, they have very serious reason to question if they are saved. They're they living be. in sin, they're not married, they're yeah, uh, then I would, I would. doing, doing uh, terrible things. Yeah, if they're, if they're living in adultery or fornication or homosexual lives or anything like that, then then for sure I would say that they, even if they claim to be a Christian, they are showing evidence of, to the contrary. So they're not one who's enduring to the end because they don't, they've never known Christ. They're still not in Him. Well, they haven't endured to the end yet, and you haven't endured to the end. I haven't endured to the end. Right, but I, absolutely, but I can trust in Him. That's where my faith and my hope so is that, it's in Christ. That scripture would not be there if, if that, yeah. what, it, what you're reading in John chapter 3, if they, they wouldn't agree, that, that those two scriptures wouldn't agree if, if what you believe in John, in, chapter John, in John chapter 3 about being saved, born again. That works perfectly with it, because that is, that's an example of those no, who are born again. You're not at the end. I'm not personally at the end, but no, I know I trust in, I trust in God. I don't see every single thing that's going to, I don't know anything that's going to happen in my well, future. But we trust and we hope in God, yes. I trust I in do him. too. But, but that's the point. I believe him like Abraham believed God. I believe him too. Abraham didn't think that he had any hope. He didn't think Sarah could have a baby, but he trusted and believed God. And that's what I believe. I believe God. He will keep me. Just like, you know, he gave Abraham a baby. He will keep me until the end because it's him. It's not me. I don't deserve it. It's all him, mm-hmm. by his grace. Well, and it's an amazing grace, right? Like, what greater thing gave, is there? He gave Abraham a, a baby because he 
that was part of God's plan yep. to uh, exactly. initially right from the beginning of Genesis chapter 315 of, of how he was going to save mankind. He was going to create a nation that would bring bring forth a Messiah, and the Messiah then would... Right, that was all his plan, yeah. That was his Always. plan. Yeah. Always, right from the beginning of, even before the foundation so of the world, that was his plan. Uh, that was the reason that that Abraham and Sarah had the child, so that was the reason for that birth. Right. Yeah. And that was the reason for that miracle. Yeah. But miracles aren't happening now, and oh. uh, so there's oh, no are, miracles. Though. You don't think any miracles happen anymore? Miracles don't happen now, no. I was a bit surprised at this comment, but I probably shouldn't have been. When your entire religion, your entire life and worldview is committed to a magazine publishing company, not in the literal risen Jesus, this kind of rejection of all things spiritual is a pretty natural result. They've been taught that the physical is all there really is. So that is what they place their hope in. You'll hear more of that as she tries to move the conversation back to paradise earth yet again. Now, let me be clear. I am a cessationist which means that I believe the apostolic signs and wonders gifts are no longer active offices in the church today because they were specifically for the laying of the foundation of the church. But that does not mean that miracles do not still happen or that there are no spiritual gifts imparted to believers to edify one another. That has never ceased. God is sovereign. As such, he performs miracles whenever he chooses, and that has always and will always be true. At this point, I brought up the miracle of being born again because at least she does, in theory, believe that it happens for some people. I didn't want to tell her about other miracles that the Lord is doing today because I could tell that she was shutting down and getting frustrated that I wasn't agreeing with her on the salvation issue. So I didn't want to push that too much and give her an opportunity to just shut down our conversations and wash her hands of me quite yet. Every time a person is born again, that's a miracle. And you even no, believe that's that some people... No, that's part of Joe's plan. Right. And, yeah. and, 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 but the, so was, when so was that, Abraham and they, Sarah that's having when a baby. They die. they're, they're born again when they die, and they go to heaven then. No, no there people, is, are, people are born again. Christ is being enthroned. That, see, no, that's not scriptural. That's Watchtower. Pardon? That's, that's what your organization is teaching you, but that's not what scripture mm -hmm. says. We must be born again. Yeah, yeah, to go to heaven. That's mm -hmm. what we're called to. We're called to be born again. But it doesn't say Christ, that everybody has to be born again. It's so yeah. to go to heaven. No, we have to. Well, that's exactly. And, and what is heaven but presence with Jehovah? What is greater than that? To be in his presence without any of his wrath because we've been perfected in him. And so we get to but glory you know in that him we're actually, him. You know, the earth is, is part of, yeah. of God's kingdom because... Yeah. I agree. Um, uh, the earth is referred to as the footstool. Sure, yeah. So we're in, we're in Jehovah's presence. We're in the we're here well, on earth on the footstool, not which really, is though. in Jehovah's presence. Not really, though, because he's in heaven, and you don't consider that that's a separate. The thing earth from is Je is Jehovah's footstool. So, but and then, the footstool. Then you're not is in, part of a palace. But then you're it? not in his presence. You're you're you can't see his kingdom, right? Because Jesus isn't there, he's up in heaven, so you're not really with him, you're just kind of, you're just in a new, slightly nicer earth. Well, you know, you know, um, we're just so far apart, I think, that uh, this, this, we're not getting anywhere. I think we're just, we're doing comparisons and they're not, they're not, they're not doing anything really. Yeah. You know, I think, um, but we're not getting anywhere, we're just. You know, I understand what you, what, what you're, where you're coming from, and um, you understand my version of the Bible, and uh, it's, I, it's not getting anywhere, really. You know, don't you think so? Well, I think we're, um, we're definitely not agreeing on these things, and I'm glad we're getting into the details of it. But um, I hope that doesn't mean that you don't want to talk to me anymore. Well, I, I just don't see the point. We're just going to bring out, it's just going to bring out uh, uh, the differences. What's and wrong with we're that? Not, and we're, we're not allowing the Bible to speak. Well, I think that's what we're both actually trying to do very much, 
we're, we're not allowing the Bible to speak at all. I, I don't I don't see that at all. I think we're actually we're we're trying to dig into the scriptures because, here because you know uh, the uh, the way uh, the way the uh, uh, the Bible students and I think I told you that before the the way the Bible students found uh, came out with the pro- the proper renditions of the Bible. Isn't this interesting wording? The Bible students had to come up with a proper rendition of the Bible? For one thing, they didn't come up with the New World Translation back when they were still calling themselves Bible students. That came many years later. For decades, they used the King James Version, and you can even still access it on their website. But also, Comments like this show the Watchtower's pride and arrogance because they teach that basically all the people in the world's history before Russell and the Adventists came along were too stupid or uneducated or just didn't study enough to know what the Bible really teaches about hell, the Trinity, war, salvation by works, blood transfusions, and the list goes on and on and is always changing. When when a bunch of like uh, mind uh, spiritually minded people who had an interest in the Bible, had different views of, of dif- with different churches got together and had preconceived ideas. But when they compared Bible scriptures, they came up with one thought, mm-hmm. and that's what I was hoping we we could do. Mm. But we're just getting uh, further and further apart, I think, in thought. Well, yeah, because we're we're just that. That's why I was hoping we could go straight through these chapters in Romans, because that lets Paul speak, that lets God speak, so that you have to take it in its own context. And I think that well, that's the best way to really read the Bible. Well, so right? far we haven't come to any agreement there. No, we haven't. I know <laughs> that's the thing. But all we were doing was reading right through Scripture. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really important. I hope you'll keep doing it, even if you don't want to talk to me anymore. I hope you'll keep reading straight through those passages and just read them. And not. And I don't mean like in the little piecemeal bits that the you know the organization gives you, but you just pick it up and read it. Well, I you know. So, so we're 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 going to, we'll we'll read the, the the verse and we'll see what what we're, do, we're what you're trying to do is what words are different is that what you're trying to find no. out oh no that was just that was a a, a point of interest in something because that i don't compare. see what difference that makes i don't see what uh, you know what that well, clarifies well because i'm seeing a framework that that um the organization uses in your scriptures that i want to be careful to make sure that we're actually sticking to the literal greek and hebrew here instead of you know, the paraphrasing that they do, because I think that can, if you add that all together, like, like you know, what we were talking about there with this whole, um, you know, exercising faith, which turns faith into works, they're, they're kind of putting a different idea in your head of what faith is. And if they do that, little places here and there and all over through Well, well when, you, when you read, when we read, just what we, what we read at John there, mm-hmm. 316, and then mm-hmm. at 36, don't you as- associate faith with, with obedience, and obedience is works. Absolutely, but not to to save. Salvation happens and it creates the works. You believe well, that the works bring the, you salvation. The end result of faith is salvation, isn't it? Faith is a gift of God, and that definitely... Yeah, it's a gift if we salvation. exercise faith, if we no, are obedient. See, now, see, so you said it again. So if I do my faith... Well, that's what John... No. 36 says, uh, Paul, Paul in Ephesians clearly tells us that faith is a gift from God, so it is believing in him, and then the works flow from that, and they must flow from that. If they don't, that's evidence that you weren't ever gifted faith to begin with. And that's a, the Ephesians 2 tells us that really clearly. It's a gift, and that's why we're I agree transformed. with it. It, 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 it. That's not the problem of the, the gift. The gift is, we agreed on that, the gift is the gift is the the gift is the life blood of Christ Jesus mm-hmm. as a ransom to pay for our sins. But you didn't really pay for your sins because you don't know if you're saved yet. Well, we don't pay for them till till oh. uh, till I, till uh, God brings in Christ Jesus into with the new kingdom on the earth. It's in heaven now. But it's when it's on earth and after Armageddon, why, why is there a day of judgment? 
Why is there a day of judgment? Mm-hmm. On sin. And that is going to be a, 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 a day, a certain day. So yeah. it's not when when a person dies that they pay, that they paid for their sins. Their sins are are paid when when they when they're dead. Right. They go in as soon as a person dies. They go. But straight, then they, the, it speaks of a judgment day. As soon as a person dies, they go into the presence of Jehovah, and if they don't have the covering of Christ, then they face Jehovah on their own merit, which is filthy rags. So they don't have anything. They are they are just facing the fire of God. That's it. So, though, and I don't want that for you. And that's why I like to talk to you about these things, because I want you to, to see that, that God has given this whole promise here in his word for you. And he wants you. And that's what I want. I want to see you in the kingdom. And where is that kingdom? Where is that kingdom? That kingdom is in Christ. And and after Christ returns, that will be so in what you. does that do and for me physically? Here it is again that focus on the physical. Watchtower has trained her to ignore or downplay the very nature of Jehovah, of man, of sin, of holiness, of the spiritual. So all she wants to talk about is a somewhat nicer earth that she thinks she will maybe get to see one day. It's heartbreaking. For you physically, right now? No, when I'm in Christ. If you are in what Christ... Is, what, what is what is my future? If you are if you are born again and you are in Christ, then either when Christ comes again or you die, you go to be in the presence of Jehovah forever in glory. And and, and when He returns, there will be the new heavens and the new earth, and we will be on the new earth. Until then, those who die before then, we go to be with the Lord in spirit in heaven. And then. So do you? So you? Do you believe, like a lot of Pentecostals and, and Baptists do, that the uh, that the earth and the heavens are going to be destroyed, um, and that there is going to be a new, uh, completely new one? I'm not sure if I could use those words because there's going to be a new spiritual reality. So it's it'll be a resurrection. So am I, I going to be continually spiritual, or am I going to be ever ever physically? Um, Christians who are saved and born again. And we go to heaven, and when the and when the resurrection happens, that's when Christ returns. Our bodies will be physically resurrected, and we will be united in our bodies, and they will be perfect and glorified and live forever. But that's the physical stuff. The point really isn't like the scriptures aren't about the physical; they're about Christ. They're about God. It's all about Him and His glory and being with Him, having total forgiveness for our sins that no, we don't that we don't no, deserve. The, 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 the scriptures are are uh, what is our future physically? No, that's like that's so shallow, though, right? Like that's like what can I get? What can I get for me? What's you know? Maybe I get a big mansion one day and all that kind of thing. I get a nice, happy, healthy body. Hey, I live in you know physical suffering, and so I get the temptation to be focused on that. But no. but that's not my hope. My hope is in Christ, and that's all wonderful stuff. I'm excited about, but. My ultimate hope is yes, I get to be perfected. So I don't think there's no point in really in, in no, us. You really don't want you don't want to be perfected in Christ. You don't want to live with Him in glory forever. Isn't I have a better plan? How is that better? In the Bible, it's so shallow. No, it's it's a beautiful one if you could just see it. Oh, I, I just pray you come to know the Lord, and I'm praying for you. I just, you know, if you want to talk about the, you know, if you want to do the scripture thing again, well, sure, I'm. I'm, that'll be okay, but okay. But uh, do you want to do that again? I don't know. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. Do you want to just pick up at chapter five another time? Sure. Okay. All, All right. right. Let's you do give that. Give me a dingle then. Okay. We'll pick up. Okay, bye bye. Okay. Bye bye.